Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the October 2023 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P1 paper. This question here is about a curve which has equation y equals f of x, where x is greater than zero. Again, that might come in useful for us later on. So keep that in our, in our mind. f dash of x is equal to 4x squared plus 10 minus 7x to the power of a half all over 4x to the power of a half. So that is the gradient function. That is like f of x after it's been differentiated. They told us that the point 4 minus 1 lies on the curve. We got to first find the value of the gradient of, this, of C at P. So we got to find the gradient of the curve at C. And then hence, using the answer, find the equation of the normal to C, the normal to the curve at P, giving your answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals zero, where A, B, and C are integers to be found. So the first thing is we want to find the value of the gradient of the curve at, of, of the curve C at the point P. So basically what we've got to do is we've got to take the gradient function which is already given to us and we've got to replace the x with 4 and see what happens. Okay, and that will give us the value of the gradient of the curve at C. All right, so we need to just substitute this value into this uh, equation. So we have 4 times 4 squared plus 10 minus 7 times. Now this x to the power of a half means the square root of, so 7 times the square root of x, which is square root of 4, over, and here we have 4 times, again, this means the square root of, so the square root of 4, that's going to give you 4 times 16, which is 64, let me do it down here, 64, plus 10, minus 7 times 2, which is 14, over, and that's 4 times 2, which is going to be 8, so that's 64 minus 14, that's going to be 50, is that right? 64 minus 14 um, is going to be 50. 50 plus 14 is 64, that's right. Plus 10 over 8. So that's going to be 60 divided by 8. If you simplify that, um, 4 goes into both of those. That's going to be 15 over 2. So that is the value of the gradient of C at P. Therefore, we can say the gradient of C at P is 15 over 2. Okay, so there's the answer to part 1. Now for part 2 it says hence, meaning using your answer that you did, find the equation of the normal to C at P. So the equation of the normal. So we know that the gradient of the curve at C is 15 over 2. And we know that it goes through the point P which is 4 minus 1. All right, so First of all, let's work out what a, or explain what a, a normal means, a normal to a curve. Here we have a curve. Just say this is a curve. We don't know if this is a curve. I'm just drawing a, any old curve. A tangent to a curve is a line which touches the curve at a particular point. All right, so let's say this is the point P. Okay, this is called the tangent to the curve. The normal to a curve is a line that goes through the same point as a tangent, which is, touches the curve at that point, but a normal actually cuts through the curve at that point, Okay, but it cuts through the curve such that it's at 90 degrees to the tangent. So the gradient of the normal to the curve at that point will always be perpendicular to the gradient of the tangent. So we can say the gradient of the normal is, you know, the negative reciprocal of, so minus 1 over the gradient of the tangent. So we know that the gradient of the tangent is 15 over 2. 15 over 2. Therefore, the gradient of the normal is going to be minus 2 over 15, the negative reciprocal. So we have the point P, which is 4 minus 1. We know the gradient of the normal at P is minus 2 over 15. And we want to find the equation of this straight line, which we can use the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And we want it in the form where all of those are integers. So it's much easier for us to deal with it in this using this formula here. So you have y minus the y value of the point, which is minus minus 1, we can give you y plus 1, equals m, which is minus 2 over 15, times x minus the y value, x value of, of the point p, which is 4. So this gives you y plus 1 equals minus 2 over 15 times x minus 4. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by 15 to get rid of the fraction. That's going to give me 15y 
plus 15 equals, I'm going to multiply by minus 2 here, so minus 2x plus 8. Then I'm going to add 2x to both sides to bring my x term on this side. I'll have plus 15y, and I'll have 15 minus 8, which is going to be plus 7. So I have 2x plus 15y plus 7 is equal to 0. That is the equation of the normal to the curve at the point P. Okay, and that concludes part 2. All right, so there's a mark, there, there's an answer to part number seven, part two. Okay, eight, a part two. Okay, now we're going to go on to seven uh, B. Okay, so part B tells us to find the actual the function f of x. So we have the gradient function. We want to find the actual function. Now, when we're going from f of x to f dash of x, we have to differentiate. When we're going in reverse we have to integrate, all right? So we can say f of x is going to be the integral of f dash of x with respect to x, okay? And um, we can do this in a number of ways, all right? Now in P1, we haven't learned about limits, so I'm not gonna teach you the method with involving limits because that comes in P2 integration. Just in case some of you are doing this before you've learned that, I'm, I'm gonna avoid that for this, um, this course. I'll just teach you with the plus, See, so basically, first of all, we're going to take f dash of x and we're going to get it ready for integration. Right now, it's not really ready to be integrated. So we need to express this as separate terms with the x term on top. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 4x squared over 4x to the power of a half. I need it in index form, so I'm going to keep it in index form, but I'm going to write it such that I'm going to split it into three separate fractions with that same denominator. So minus 7x to the power of a half over 4x to the power of a half. So we need to simplify this and have only x in the numerator. So basically the 4 here will cancel with the 4. We've got x to the power of 2 divided by x to the power of a half. Now when you divide two numbers in the index form, you subtract their powers. Okay, and this is why the topic of indices is really very important for us in this, in this uh, course. Okay, and um, you know, it's something that you should know really well. So... You divide two numbers in index form with the same base, you subtract the power, so 2 minus a half is 3 over 2. It's 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2, which is 3 over 2. So you end up with 3, x to the power of 3 over 2. And here you're going to have 10 and the 4 cancel. Um, what goes into both of them? 2, so you have 5 over 2. So you're left with plus 5 over 2 times. Now this x to the power of a half is in the denominator. We want to write it in the numerator, so you're going to write x to the power of negative a half. So the two, if you have 1 over 2 x to the power of a half, this is going to be 1 over 2 x to the power of minus a half. Common mistake is for people to write this as 2 x to the power of minus a half. No, that minus here, okay, is only for the x, right? The 2 remains down here, okay? So you write this as a half of x to the power of minus a half. The 2 doesn't move, just the x when you put that as a negative. So this is going to be 5 over 2 and x to the power of minus a half. And here the x to the power of a half cancel out because they're the same. If you subtract them, you get 0. x to the power of 0 is 1. So you're left with minus 7 over 4. So now this is ready for us to integrate. When I integrate this, I'm going to get f of x. Okay, if I integrate this with respect to x, I'm going to get f of x. So this is ready now to be integrated. So I have x to the power of 3 over 2 plus 5 over 2 x to the power of minus a half minus 7 over 4 integrate with respect to x so we're going to add one to the power so that's going to be x to the power of 5 over 2 divided by 5 over 2 plus add one to the power here so we have 5 over 2 x to the power of a half divided by a half okay because you add one to the power it gives you a half and the constant term will gain an x so 7 over 4x and don't forget the plus c very important we have to write the plus c here so you have f of x equals this with the plus c at the end. Now we can rewrite this. We have divided by 5 over 2, which is the same as multiplying by 2 fifths. So 2 fifths x to the power of 5 over 2. And here you're going to have 2 times a half. That will cancel out anyway, in the, both in the denominator. Or you can say the half, you divide by half, it's multiplying by 2. The 2s will cancel out anyway. So you're left with plus 5 x to the power of a half minus 7 over 4x plus c. So this is f of x, but there's something missing. We need to know what c is. Now, how do we find what c is? Well, we use the fact 
that this point lies on the curve. All right, so if 4 minus 1 lies on the curve, if P, 4 minus 1, lies on the curve, that means if I replace the X with 4, what's going to come out is minus 1 because this point satisfies this equation. So if I put 4 into here, what should come out is minus 1. So we can use that fact to find C. So I'm going to replace the X with 4, so I'll have 2 over 5. Now I'm going to rewrite this in the form of um, indices, um, uh, thirds, because it's easy for us to deal with. So this 5 over 2 means the square root of x to the power of 5. So this is the square root of 4 to the power of 5. Okay, this denominator is the root and the numerator is the power. 5 x to the power of a half means this x to the power of a half means the square root of x. So the square root of 4 and minus 7 over 4 times 4 plus c. So this gives me 2 fifths times the square root of 4 is 2, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So that's, that's going to be 2 fifths times 32 plus 5 times 2, which is 10, minus 7 over 4 times 4, which is minus 7, plus C, and that should equal minus 1. I should have put minus 1 in the beginning. All of that should give you minus 1. So let's see what we get. So 2 fifths, that's 64 over 5, um, plus 3, plus C equals minus 1. So C is going to be... Um, Minus 1 minus 2 is minus 4 minus 64 over 5. So that's minus 20 over 5 minus 64 over 5, which is minus 84 over 5. So C is minus 84 over 5. So therefore, our function is going to be f of x will equal 2 over 5 x to the power of 5 over 2 plus 5 x to the power of a half minus 7 over 4x, minus 84 over 5. And that is our equation. And that is the completion of this question. Question number 7 from the October 2023 P1 paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from the topic of... I guess this is... Um, the first part is to do with uh, differentiation, really, equations of tangents and normals. But I'll, I'll just put this under integration, at the topic of integration. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link, and you can watch a video here which will tell you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.